What's up everybody? Back in my truck, back on another uh, destination journey. So I am taking a hold on building my target stand because I got a phone call this morning that I needed to uh, pick up another piece of archery equipment. Not bad, right? It's pretty cool. Finally get to see one in person. Kept seeing videos, pictures. Keep having my buddies in Australia and UK say, hey, I got my Prevail, have you got yours yet? Has it come in? And no, it hasn't, man. It was, it was a frustrating long wait, but here it is. Posted a few pictures, videos, talked about it on my social media pages, Instagram, Facebook. Um, just did a live feed from uh, when you're watching this on my Facebook channel that had some more information on it, talked about it, showed off you know, a few things about it. Um, Again, I'm not going to do a bow build. I've had some people ask me if I'm going to do that. Um, I'm, I'm not. Uh, you know, John Dudley with his Knock on Archery channel, he did a really great one over the Prevail and the uh, um, Defiant. And, um, you know, same thing with Greg Poole on his personal channel, not the Bow Junkie uh, you know, Facebook page, just his personal one. Um, he did a great one over the Prevail and also uh, the adult size defiant as he calls it the XL so um, I'm not going to do that because they have really great information in both of those and I mean just go view them I'm going to put some links in the description down below that way you can see them have a direct access to them watch my video first please but then you can go watch them um, but I am going to show some things that I'm doing differently than what they did in their videos and just talk about some stuff that's going on um, I do have a little bit different error rest that I'm going to use I've used the Spot Hog Edge Rest for a long time, and I just got it recently their swap, their edge swap. So um, this has got two bodies in there that I'm going to be able to set up for indoor and outdoor. I'm going to be using this bow for both. It's not going to be 100% ideal for using it that way for both, but it is going to allow me to be able to correctly set up a blade for each and not have to worry about changing it. Um, Peapot will be a little bit off and my anchor point will be a little bit off compared to what I'm going to be doing with it, but I'm, I mean that's okay with me for what I'm doing with it. And you can't beat that having the two rests in there um, for what I'm doing with this. I like that. Um, so I am going to show that. I'm going to do a little bit more up close view of it, see what I think about it. I haven't used it yet. I've barely even taken it out of the box just to look at it um, and just give you an idea on it. And then at some point I'll do a, a review video just on that rest so you can see it. I'm going to play around with different stabilizer positionings. They have the hole here at the top um, directly behind the front uh, rod and then they have a lower one like the normal one that I've been using. I'm going to play around with both of those. This bow. Um, it, you know, obviously they moved the grip back down lower. And, um, weight wise, as far as stabilizer bars go, I'm gonna need more leverage on the front, just like I did with the uh, Pro Comp Elite. Because if you hold this bow out in your hand like this and then you let go as far as letting go of the front of the bow, it's gonna come completely over backwards. And I mean, that's, the podium probably stopped about right here when it was bare, but this one, I mean, I've gotta catch it to keep it from flipping over backwards with my finger right here. Um, They've got the grip just below center point of the bow. They put the burger buttonhole in the center point. So when you're drawing back, I'll show you the way I set the arrow up. I'm gonna set it up to draw it straight back. Um, and I'm gonna see how that feels. I'm gonna run a straight connect on the front instead of the 10 degree down that I've been using on my podium. The reason that is, like I said, I need that more leverage. So I want that bar to be sticking away from the bow and away from the riser a little bit further. Um, and then I may, I'm gonna start out with my 12 inch rear back bar but I may end up going back to a 10. I ran a 10 on my Pro Comp Elite. That's what I found to work best on there. So I may end up having to do that again. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Also, I'm going to try it out up here in this top uh, mount to see if that's any different for me. Um, there was a little bit of talk on the live feed that Bow Junkie did when these bows first came out with Hoyt. That, that may help with right and left tear situation. I'm curious. I want to see for sure. Um, I'm an archer that has a natural right tear on anything that I shoot. Um, so that may be a better option for me up here. We'll see. We'll see how it works. Um, cam lean is really great. Spacers on here. Cable guard side has the red spacer. The white spacer is on the non-cable guard side. Hopefully that's coming through. Let's see if I can... Yeah, hopefully that's coming through. I don't know how well the light is. Um, cam lean is, is great. I don't have any... I've drawn it back with fingers once just to see what it felt like. I didn't have any problems with any rubbing on the cams, which is awesome. It's outstanding. Um, if you hold an arrow against the flat side of the cam here and see where it connects and crosses over, 
it's basically coming over where the D loop is going to be. That's on the top cam, and it does pretty much the same thing on the bottom cam. Um, so I'll let you see that as well. It's a little bit more straight up and down versus crossing over, so it's right here. I mean, that's great. Straight out of the box, you can't beat that on either one. So um, it's going to give me a great starting point. This is the X3 cam. So you can see it here. I don't know if that's going to come through again. I'll have some better pictures of it. 75% um, let off on there, the mods that they have on here. Um, I got that because I think it's going to help with my shot a little bit more, the way that I'm going to shoot the bow and the way that I'm going to hold with it. And I really want to try these X3 cams because I hear they're more uh, comparable to the C2 cam than the GTX. So we'll see how that works. Supposed to have a really good back wall. The 65% let off mods on the uh, the X3 cam have an aluminum draw stop on it. This one does not. This is 75% mod. This is a rubber um, draw stop in the middle. Is a rubber piece. It's not a really soft rubber, but it's also not a hard rubber like you see on the spiral peg. It's kind of an in-between. Um, it's not as big as what you would see on some like the DFX hunting cams and stuff like that. So I'm going to see how that feels. Uh, it felt all right with figures just holding it, but I'm going to put a release on it and just see what I like. Um, if it's a little bit soft for me, then I'm going to have some more information coming out on what I'm going to do as far as changing that out and getting an aluminum draw stop peg on there because I do like a pretty firm back wall. I, I don't want it to move a whole lot. Um, yeah, I'm anxious to get this set up. I'm going to start on that. I've got some pictures that I'm going to roll through and do some voiceovers for you. Some of them that I posted on my Instagram and Facebook channels, a couple of them that I did not. So you can see some differences on how these bows are set up. So I wanted to be able to show some height differences here for the podium that's going to be on the bottom and then the new Prevail on the top. These are going to be lined up axle to axle on each one. And it's just showing how the, the height difference between the grip on each bow is. It's a pretty severe drop. And actually, you'll see in these last photos that when compared to the previous Pro Comp Elite, comparing to the Prevail now, it almost looks like the Pro Comp Elite even had a little higher grip position than the new Prevail. All right, so this is what I wanted to do is just show you some of that rest. Um, this is the swap rest, so I've already gotten everything kind of tightened down here and looked at it comes in two pieces. You're going to have this front part here and then you're going to have the bases that go on it. And it's pretty much the exact same as what you would see on a regular edge rest. Um, it does have an extended slot here to where you can move it back and forth for torque tuning, which is good. The set screw is going to be up here in the top now versus having it over here on the side like they did before. They did that so that they could get an extended channel here. That way you can move it a little bit further front and back. Um, when you get it in the box, really awesome carrying case comes together and you've got everything that you want right here you're gonna have an extra base if you ordered it that way you can order it with one or with two if you order it with two it comes with two sets of blades both here and there this middle part is gonna have that center section all that's gonna be included whenever you originally purchase it that way you can uh, switch them out swap them out have everything set up to where if you want to just test two setups maybe you're testing some blade setups a 10 and an 8 or something like that on your outdoor setup 10 and a 12 on an indoor something like that you have that option or if you're going to do it like what i do and i'm going to run an indoor and an outdoor setup all with the same bow you'll be able to do it all right guys quick little update here i've got everything set up uh, i've got my rest on stabilizers everything i went ahead and started out on this upper stabilizer hole just to see what was going on uh, with the way it feels and the way it's shooting and holding and I'm about to switch that down to this lower one and just see how it aims and see what the difference is on it from there. Um, I did notice one thing. I normally run my bracket and everything as close to the riser as I can and on this top part I'm not going to be able to do that. Um, it's a little bit more of a swell here because of the way that the uh, riser and everything is designed so I need to move it one more out because I really need this back bar I need it to be angled a little further down. I need a little bit more leverage over the front end, so I need to drop this rear bar down to take away some of that. I'm not gonna be able to do that in that position. So if I keep it here, I'm gonna have to move it out one notch and just see how it goes from there. Um, left and right balance is pretty much the exact same as what my podium was. I haven't had to move this bar in or out to level up my bubble and everything for the way that I hold the bow. So all that's great. Um, straight, you know, connect on the front. Um, all that was fine as well. I did notice something on the cams I wanted to talk about. This is on their new um, module system. Let's see if I can get this to light up and look right here. So 
when they've got the cams here, they've got the module set up, they've got different holes for each one of these. On this second screw right here, there's three different holes. There's this one here, there's one over to the side, and there's one over to the right of it. And all those are going to correspond with the mod, the way that it's set up. As you rotate this back and forth, this screw's got to come completely out, and you will align that with the cam, or with the mod rather, to go on whichever you know uh, hole that you need it to be. I actually found this bow to run pretty spot on to draw length. So sometimes you notice in the past that they'll run about a quarter inch long. This one didn't do that. Um, for me, this one ran pretty much spot on the way that it was supposed to be. What I normally do is set up a bow. Um, out of the box, the way that I'll do it is a 28 cam because they do run a little bit long. And then I'll actually lengthen that out about um, usually about a 16 to 3 30 seconds somewhere in that area on this one when I ran it at 28 It was actually pretty much spot on at 28 So I ended up having to put it in the 28 and a half position, which is better for me. Um, this is a um, It runs to 29 on the draw link for these mods So I'm actually in the D slot. So I actually like that a little bit better That's gonna give me some better performance and better feel out of the cam um, But what I did is I ran it that way. It was pretty spot on and then I put some twists in the string to be able to bring it back down to the draw length that I need which is roughly around 28 and a quarter so I actually put a few twists in the string brought it down brought the holding weight up a little bit more doing it that way I took a little bit of uh, the let off away being able to do it that way so not long string like you see me do in the past on my spiral actually short stringing these just a little bit I put six twists in there so it wasn't a whole lot um, but that got me exactly where I needed it to I took out, um, it peaked at 62 pounds, it's a 60 pound bow, it peaked at 62, which is very normal. Um, back that out to where it went to uh, 56, it was actually at 57, and then I put the twist on the string and brought it down to 56, which is normally what I run. I might run this one a little bit higher. These cams are really smooth, um, so it's easy to draw with them, it's not a big deal. I do have a pretty good back uh, wall feel. The strings on here, they're still stretching and settling and settling in the cam tracks and everything. I've only put about maybe six sh uh, shots through it now. So that will still be left to see how it's gonna feel. But overall, I'm pretty impressed with everything. Looks like it's doing really good so far. So I'm gonna keep uh, playing with this, set it up the way that I want to with my knock sets, um, get everything balanced right with the stabilizers and pick everything up from there. All right guys, so I'm gonna officially call it a night on day one of setting everything up here. I've got a huge mess. I've actually cleaned a lot of it up. Um, I've got a bow over here and a mess over here. Um, extra stabilizers. I've been back and forth between the 12 and the 10 just to see which one I like the best as far as overall weight and holding. I did try out some different things. Um, I tried out the higher holding here, uh, the higher bolt hole and the lower one. And I, for now, I definitely like the higher one. Uh, when I used the lower bolt uh, mounting position for this rear uh, stabilizer, it felt like it had more leverage and more pull on the bow. It almost felt like it was trying to pull the bow, you know, and, and tilt it with me. Um, exact same setting, you know, it's, it's in line with each other in the exact same setting left and right and up and down on the bar, but it did feel like it had more leverage over the bow and it was wanting to pull the top of the bow to my left. Um, so I actually, I like the way it feels better on the higher setting, it's right there underneath my hand. It feels like it balances a little bit better. It feels like it puts less torque on my grip. For now, I am gonna leave it right there. Um, tomorrow, I'm gonna come out, I'm gonna tie in some knock sets, put my peep side in and go ahead and start shooting it more, uh, testing it more with that. Um, trying out some more stuff on the stabilizer settings. Um, still not completely happy with it all. I need a little bit more forward weight. But I do want to talk about how it aims. Um, it does out aim my podium. Um, it aims kind of similar to the way the Hyper Edge did, that really long riser feeling where you can put it on target and it just holds there. Um, I Really, I want to contribute that to probably the, the lower grip position and the way that they put the D-loop uh, or with the burger button hole in the middle and I've, I've lined the D-loop up with that. Um, I'm still playing with height a little bit um, to see kind of how I'm gonna like for it to feel overall. Man, it, it does, it aims a lot better. Um, it feels really still on target. It doesn't want to bob up and down as bad, and I don't have to fight it as bad as what I did with my podium. And really all I'm working on right now is working on a little bit of left and right on my motion, and that's just because I don't have enough front weight 
compared to what I really need and what I like. Um, that's with the zero grip, so I don't have an angle on it. That's the way I've been shooting my podium. I wanted to start out with that. I've shot the other angle grips before, and I'm gonna try that again with this bow because it's different riser geometry, and I wanna see how that feels. And that's gonna be a pickup on some of my later um, you know, videos that I do as a continuation for the review on this. But overall, I am excited. I am impressed with this bow. It does aim a lot better. It feels more still on target, and it feels more balanced and weighted, I guess is the best way to pull. It, it really feels like the way that you can pull against the, the midpoint of the bow versus your hand being right below it and just the balance that they did in the riser, it does make everything feel a lot more stable and a lot more um, mounted to the target, I guess is the best way to do it. It really feels like that. It really feels like it's mounted into the target. Um, definitely feel like that's an improvement over the podium for aiming. Now it's just fine tuning so that I can get, you know, the little stuff down, um, you know, the 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 bars and everything set up the exact way that I want to, the back wall to feel the exact way that I want to. Um, it does feel a little bit spongy, but at the same time, my, my, my spirals even feel that way with stock strings. These have a little bit more give in them in the way that I prefer, um, just with the, you know, a different type of build and a different type of, you know, way that I get my strings and everything set up. So I'm gonna get some new strings ordered and get those coming in as soon as I can and um, use that to give me a better idea on what the back wall feels like to see if I'm gonna end up going with a different uh, draw stop that is an aluminum style draw stop. So we'll see from there. Hey guys, I appreciate you watching the video. This is part one. This is gonna be a multi-part video. Um, this one's pretty long even at that, but I wanna try to put as much information as I can in about these bows and you know, really give you an up close you know, view of them, let you know what you're looking at with these. Appreciate you watching today. Keep an eye out for some more and get out, do something archery.